Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a digital rebar provision training session on how to use packet.net with digital rebar. So this is a install. We're going to take you through the whole install process, which is a little bit different than our normal install and quick start. Uh, there's a special page that should be integrated into the docs by the time you watch this, but it's under setup packet um, that'll take you through the steps uh, that we're going to show you right now. Um, and there's a couple of options. They're pretty fast and easy. And so if you have a packet account, if you don't uh, use RackN100 when you sign up, you'll get a credit. Uh, but I'm just going to create a simple machine. I'm going to call it Bootstrap. I'm going to do it in New Jersey. There's a lot of capacity usually. I don't. I just need a tiny, so I'm going to pick the smallest. And I'm going to pick the CentOS 7, the fast one. I don't need additional configuration, so I'm just going to go. And in this case, it's going to run through the steps uh, to build a new server for me. Super easy. I already have an IP address, but it's not accessible yet, so I'm going to wait a, a little bit explain what I'm about to do for you uh, so you can see this process. So in the packet provision, um, I am going to need to do a couple of things. Um, pretty straightforward. This is our normal install process right here. Uh, so it just gets the install system. In this case, I'm going to install it as system D. So it'll run in the background and be persistent. And I'm going to set the IP address, the public IP address of the machine when I do that install. That's really important for machines that are dual homed, like Packet and Amazon, Linode, things like that, so that the digital rebar knows which IP address to self-identify as. You'll see why that's important because we're going to set the IPixy host automatically for this system. And then I'm going to tell it to install. And then from there, I'm just going to tell it to let systemd do its thing, which is all right. Um, and then once I've got that running, I'm going to take advantage of this DRP CLI catalog install item, uh, and that will install the specialized plugin that enables uh, out-of-band management for packet using packets API, IPMI, or API. Um, so start, stop, reboot from digital rebar's normal command structure. You can also create and destroy machines. We're definitely gonna show you how to do that. Um, and then I'm gonna upload uh, our discovery image and set the work default workflow for a packet specialized workflow. So that will actually do some identification and introspect the system and, and make sure uh, you, like you have the com, com channel set so you can use their boot environment. Uh, you can watch the Pixie boot, which we will also do. Um, but since I've shown you this to you, I, I can more or less cut and paste and we're gonna, gonna make things go. And I think I've stalled plenty long enough for packets machine to be online. So let me do this. It'll log in. Very nice. So now I've logged in, what I want to do is grab the IP address over here, and I'm going to export that. Now, now when I come over to my instructions, I don't have to, I don't need this. I can grab from here, go all the way down. That looks excellent. And this is just going through that process. It's pulling down a zip with the install and then uh, our, our install.sh uh, script is, is very sophisticated with a lot of exposed capabilities. It can do upgrades and removals, um, works with containerized, um, there's a whole bunch of options in here. So gotten very uh, sophisticated in, in this install script and please check it out. It's just in Git in the, in, under the tools install.sh, um, definitely worth uh, checking out. One other thing to note while we're waiting for the file to download is that Digital Rebar supports uh, self-upgrade. So once you have a version installed, you can use the API, the CLI, or the UX to automatically update a new version of Digital Rebar uh, just by sending the zip file. So uh, this is a sort of a one-time process, and from here, you shouldn't need to go back on the machine at all. Uh, and we have a whole bunch of support infrastructure. Multi-site demo takes advantage of this uh, at a very deep level where you can do a whole bunch of uh, version sets, configurations, pieces and parts like that. So hmm. files take a little bit of time to transfer from S3 down to packet. Okay, I paused about 30 seconds so that
you didn't have dead air in the video and you didn't want to hear me ramble on about all the beautiful things that digital rebar does for you automatically uh, in this case we've gotten to the the point we ran through that configuration and setup now i can click here and open this link um, this is the digital rebar server we just installed uh, install isn't complete yet uh, but the since the end the back end what we call the endpoint is running i can come in i can see you know we haven't set our workflows we haven't uh, finished doing the configuration. That's what this next block of instructions do. So the one I've already explained this, so I'm just gonna grab these and paste them in. This looks great. And it's literally going to the digital rebar catalog and bringing in the packet plugin, going through downloading Sledgehammer, doing all the stuff that you expect. And if we went over to the rack and UX, which I'm moving to the first tab and refresh here, you're gonna see uh, we're just going to start getting all the bits and pieces um, set from that perspective, which is excellent. So our Discover Packet workflow is available. Uh, while we wait for that to get downloaded in the background, I'm going to go ahead and, and take the plugin that we installed, the provider, and I'm going to add the actual plugin. So in this case, I went to plugins, I clicked add, the packet in IPMI is an available provider, so I'm going to use that provider. And to do this, you need to supply your API key, right? Since it's using your API, it needs the we need the the plugin needs to secure information here, and it needs to your project ID, which comes from over here. So this is the work I'm doing. It's in this project ID. Good. If I wanted to bring in machines I already had, I could click Import Existing, and it would actually create machines matching what was already installed in that project. We're not going to do that in this case. We're just going to go ahead and create those machines. Um, and remember, Digital Rebar is entirely self-contained, so there's, you're not giving your keys to RackN. It's not being uploaded to our site at all. This is being stored on the Digital Rebar site that we just installed. Uh, as a matter of fact, I could. If I come over here, we're still uploading uh, Sledgehammer, so that's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, we do need to wait for that. Um, but if I wanted, over in this window, I could grab this machines address. I've installed uh, DRP CLI on my local system. So I'm going to go, I'm going to export the RS endpoint. So this is the end, this is actually the endpoint that I have uh, running. And if I say DRP CLI uh, plugins list, it will show me the plugin I just installed and my key right there for everybody to see. That's going to get deleted in just a moment. Um, so the data is stored in the endpoint, not on my local system. Uh, let's see. All right, so we're done doing our uploads for CentOS. You have uh, negative 10 minutes to use my uh, key before you watch the video. And uh, so now we've got uh, this system going looks excellent. Um, oh, let me show you the info and preferences. So now discover packet is set. The ISOs are, that we needed are missing. Subnets are never going to get set. You don't do DHCP and packet. They, they take care of that for you. We're just doing iPixie. Um, but we do want to add some machines and let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I am going to show you this process using the using the manual process first, and then I'll show you what the automatic process looks like. So over here, if I want to add a new server and have it managed by Digital Rebar, I can call it, I'll call it Manage Me. I will pick, you want to be in the same data center. In this case, I still did Tiny is fine for me to play with, Tiny. And then instead of an OS, I'm going to tell it Custom My Pixie. So that case, uh, is going to tell it to use a local boot. I need to be HTTP, not HTTPS. The IP address of my system, 8091. So this is our insecure uh, exposed port using for, used for Pixie booting specifically. We have um, HTTPS on 8092 for all the other, other actions. Uh, so in this case, we're going to use default iPixie. This is maintained by the system uh, for iPixie. And I can actually just go to the site um, and see the see the instructions. Anything I do with this is going to go through the des, the, de, the default workflow that I defined um, in the configuration. And one thing that's important when I create this, I want to persist Pixie on on reboot. I don't know why this is defaulted false. Um, probably a legacy setting, 
But what this will do is if I reboot the system, I want it to stay under digital rebar control. And that's what that setting does. And now when I say deploy servers here, that server is going to get allocated and bootstrapped and come up against digital rebar over here and eventually show up in my machines, my machines list. That's the manual process. Super easy. Um, and I could go watch, watch booting and things like that happen, but I want to make it even easier and faster. So I'm going to go into my plugins interface. And if I go back to this plugins page, we've created a helper that just uses the digital rebar API to create a machine and injects some information that tells that plugin to create it in packets backend. Delete works too. And so if I want to come in here and have additional machines, we'll call it add me, and we're going to do two machines. We're using the same data center and we're using, this is tiny, bare metal zero is tiny in the packet API speak. When I click that blue button, it's going into the, the APIs behind the scenes. I can show you the transactions. It's creating machines for me with the correct parameter set. Um, and then that is in turn telling the packet API to create. So if I come over here, I have these machines added already within the system. Pretty cool. And if I come over to packet here, they're already being added. You can see they're, they've been added for me. Uh, super handy because then I can do all my automation and scripting against digital rebar as if it was just a normal system and take advantage of all of the creates, destroys, uh, restarts and things like that. Here's my manage me system uh, coming up for boot. And you'll notice in this case uh, when that, that system's already up and available now. Um, and we've identified because it was discovered with our packet discovery, we've actually identified a whole bunch of stuff about it. Um, same thing is going to be true with these admi systems. And I'm going to see if I'm fast enough to uh, catch this. If I SSH to that interface. Oh, good. You can actually see we caught it in the before it finished. So it did went through Pixie, iPixie, discovered it. Um, systems running up and we're actually catching that boot discovery process. So over here it's doing that. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. That's a big window. So here that we're still waiting for the systems to get captured. Uh, you can see that they're actually coming in. You can see digital rebar doing doing the work and, and doing the profiling. So everything's coming in. Systems are now created. Um, very, very easy. Uh, from that perspective, uh, it automatically sets up your default iPixie and your reboot discovery, all that stuff gets managed. One of the things that's fun here, uh, I'm going to set this this window, woohoo, set this window uh, to always on top so we can watch it over here uh, because what I want to do is I want to come back into one of these machines, should be the same one, and I'm going to pick an action, in this case, power cycle, which I could also shortcut. I'm going to power cycle here. Now we've exposed the APIs as if they were um, normal IPMI actions. So the same restart would work if it was a physical machine. In this case, we're using packets APIs to do the restart action. So if you were building a workflow and required out-of-band actions, this would simulate that 100% and we're literally rebooting the machine and, and taking it through its, its process using the digital rebar, authenticated, multi-tenant, role-based authentication system behind all this stuff. And I'm literally watching it now pixie boot through the, through the process. Um, super handy from that perspective. Um, and now it's just going through and doing exactly what you would expect it to do. Uh, this we didn't, I wasn't fast enough to catch this the first time, but here it's, it's literally going and uh, it's going to do its DHCP in just a second Sledgehammer is going to kick in and we'll, we'll do the, the multi-stage boot process that Sledgehammer enables because this is already being managed from that custom iPixie system. Boom, there we go. And we're back to booting. Uh, it's nice how fast these systems are. It's really convenient to be able to, to get these systems up and running and play. And and that's pretty much it. In just a second, it's going to finish the boot discovery process and um, check in as, as ready to go. I could then install things on them if I want. I could just come in and say, you know what, I'm going to go and install CentOS on this system, start that workflow, and it'll work, work through the process um, to make everything, 
ever to go. Yep, system's checking in and it's available again. So that's for you to play with. This is a delivered digital rebar system with all the features, bells and whistles, ready to go for your disposal. Um, boy, about 10 minutes start to finish. Um, and then we should finish. So the thing I wanna do is go in here uh, and we'll go ahead and we'll delete these machines. Uh, the plugin's gonna detect uh, the, that, it, that it knows about them and it's gonna destroy uh, those systems using the packet API. So let's go over here and check. See where we go. Uh, there's no refresh button, so I'll just manually. So one thing to note here is the machines that, that Digital Rebar created, it knew to delete. This manage me came in through the manual system and I'm gonna have to delete it by hand. Um, in this case, I'm done with the demo, so I'm, I'm literally gonna just pull all the systems down and clean up behind myself, which is always smart to do. And that is done. And then I'm over here deleting my API, API key. Sorry, everybody, no free packet servers today. If this, I hope this was helpful. Um, we just did a ton of digital rebar work, made really simple. Um, please check out these the, the documentation because this is a great, easy way to get started with this. Um, and if you have questions, please come in, join the community. Uh, we have a very vibrant Slack community. Uh, people helping each other. We're, we, we'd love to see what you're doing and, and hear interesting stories. So if you uh, come into Slack, great way to interact and learn with the community. And we're happy to help you. Uh, this is Rob Hirschfeld signing out. Looking forward to seeing you in our community.